What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video, I would not be here today making this video for you if I had not made the decision to add solar. I made that decision right about the time that Ethereum was confirming that it was going to switch to proof of stake and I knew that we would be in a situation where things would no longer be profitable, especially at my power rate. And I'm glad that I made the decision, but it took a lot of data and a lot of careful consideration before I came to the conclusion that it would make sense. And one of the ways that I made that decision was by putting the data in spreadsheets to help me see it visually. And I've been doing some thinking recently and I'm contemplating adding more solar but I'm also contemplating adding more hardware and right now I'm at a, at a crossroads trying to figure out which one is more important and part of that journey has led me to create a spreadsheet that I want to share with you guys but before we get into it if you would do me a favor hit that like and if you haven't subscribed please consider doing so by the end of the video so if you take a look at hashrate.no right now, I typically sort by profitability based on 10 cents, or excuse me, 7 cents per kilowatt hour. I was under the impression that that is approximately what I've been paying after I include my average solar production. However, I got a little bit more granular with the details. Now, I know most of you guys are probably paying around 13 cents per kilowatt hour and when you change your price per kilowatt hour that drastically changes what becomes most profitable and what is least profitable but what if you sort this chart by zero cost per kilowatt hour well in most cases you're gonna be most profitable on Nexa or Chinet there are a few exceptions here and there, like Chlor or Ironfish, and this changes daily, of course. But I knew that my solar production changed every day. Some days I have a great day, some days I have a bad day. And what if I was concerned with profitability every single day? So that's kind of what led me to create this spreadsheet also. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I've taken some of the most popular coins to mine. As you can see, we've got Alephium, Caspa, Ironfish, Novo, Dynex, Radiant, Nexa, Conflux, Neoxa, Ravencoin, Octaspace, Flux, Chlor, and Chinette. And then I have used the API key to link my account to hashrate.no. And if you guys aren't familiar with how to do this, I have a video for that as well. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. But as you can see, I've got 38 GPUs at the moment. Now, I recently got rid of about 12 of them. So I was at about 50 GPUs, but I'm kind of making some moves, trying to upgrade to the 40 series and things like that. But there's a button here, once you've connected your farm to hashrate.no, you can select estimate for all GPUs. And as you can see, these are all of the GPUs that I currently have in the farm. And if we sort by, let's say, 7 cents per kilowatt hour, the most profitable thing to mine would be Alephium at $4.54 a day in profit, followed by Nexa at $4.23, and so on. However, you know, if let me show you guys what this looks like here. So this is my GrowWatt inverters user interface and it's been doing really well the last month or two. Uh, I broke a record. My highest ever was just under 50 kilowatt hours produced in a day and I finally produced over 50 kilowatt hours per day which is pretty freaking awesome. But you know, again, if I was selling every single day, you know, like on a day like today where it rained, I didn't produce much solar at all. So what would make the most sense to mine on a day where I didn't produce much solar? And if we go back through the months here, you know, you can see there's several times that 
we have a day or two where production is really low and let me zoom out and we could take a look at the months here so as you can see we've been going up since the beginning of the year not sure where this month is going to fall it's currently the 13th so we've got roughly uh, 17 18 days left in the month and if we take a look at last year's production um, obviously October was the best and then November it went down in December it went down even more and overall we've used or we've created about 6,000 kilowatt hours which has saved me quite a bit on my electric bill uh, at 13 cents per kilowatt hour that would be roughly seven hundred and sixty six dollars so getting back to the chart here we know that my power usage on these is going to be stagnant meaning it won't change unless I add more graphics cards or make some kind of drastic changes to the hardware so a lithium uses about 3500 watts per or continuously Casper would use about 2800 watts continuously ironfish about 3400 watts and so on but in terms of kilowatt hours per day we're just simply taking this continuous number and we're multiplying it by 24 and then we divide by a thousand and that gives us kilowatt hours per day so a lithium would use about 85 kilowatt hours per day caspa 69 and it looks like caspa is actually the lowest which is interesting now as far as price per kilowatt hour where I'm at with a net meter I have a locked rate at just over eight cents per kilowatt hour this does not fluctuate given the time of day it's just stagnant that's the way that they do it and I'm very fortunate that my electric company is a co-op which means in order for changes to take place there has to be a vote amongst the members of the co-op which all customers are a member and basically what I'm getting at is it's very unlikely that they're going to change how much credit we get per kilowatt hour for having solar now if I was in a state like California and I didn't have any say so over this I would probably only be getting the wholesale rate at what the electricity company pays to perhaps another uh, creator of the electricity so I'm in a pretty good spot I think that I can calculate this out to kinda give me a good idea of how I should expand the farm whether that's adding more hardware or adding more solar but to continue on here so if a lithium uses 85 kilowatt hours per day times just over eight cents per kilowatt hour I'm spending six dollars and ninety five cents a day in electric now based on profitability at this very moment I'm getting ten dollars and fifty one cents a day in revenue mining a lithium with my farm and right now my solar uh, if we go back to the day here oops there we go so my best day was 50 kilowatt hours but we've been averaging I'd say roughly about 40 kilowatt hours per day so I've taken 40 kilowatt hours per day put it in here and then if we take a look at what that equals as far as credit that would be three dollars and twenty six cents a day now this number stays stagnant of course because I'm still producing the same amount of power regardless of what algorithm that I'm mining now in terms of what I am spending after solar we can see that a lithium, Caspa, Ironfish, Novo, Dynex, Radiant these are all core intensive algorithms and I'm spending very little per day in the cost of electricity with Caspa being the lowest at only two dollars and thirty eight cents per day the highest is going to be uh, looks like we've got a tie between a few of them here but basically anything that's uh, a memory intensive algorithm is going to use a lot more electricity and so I'm spending up to almost ten dollars a day depending on what I'm mining now if we take a look at the cost per kilowatt hour 
if my kilowatt hours used is stagnant and I'm using an average of how many kilowatt hours I'm producing then it looks like the best case scenario here is going to be looks like caspa so caspa if i'm mining it i'm only spending about 0 0.034 cents per kilowatt hour which is really good however we have to take into consideration what the profit is so the most important thing is to take the percentage of profit versus the money spent to obtain the profit and in this particular case radiant actually makes the most sense to get the most amount of money for the least amount of money spent so this doesn't change a whole lot even if I change let's say for instance if I produce 50 kilowatt hours per day then radiant is still the best thing to mine now if I'm just strictly looking at profit then Chinette would be the most profitable thing to mine but I'm also spending about the most every day to acquire that profit so you know if you're on a budget let's say for instance if I'm spending ten dollars a day well then I know I'm gonna I'm gonna have a three hundred dollar electric bill because there's 30 days in a month but if I'm only spending a dollar a day then it costs me thirty dollars to make let's say you know seventy five dollars in profit so I may not have three hundred dollars a month to spend on an electric bill but perhaps I do have you know forty five dollars a month to spend on an electric bill so I just thought this would be an interesting thought experiment to play out I'm gonna leave this particular uh, spreadsheet down in the comments below for the you guys can edit this and play with it um, and figure out what works best for you now perhaps some of you out there do not have solar but maybe you have a variable power rate you could also use this particular chart to kind of adjust these numbers as well uh, to get an idea of what makes the most sense to mine at any particular time Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy the content. Do me a favor before you go, hit that like and hit the subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next one.